Lunatics, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today, obviously, we've got a different kind of a video coming at you. I got notes all typed out right here, and I got a whole idea planned for this video. Um, I want to talk to you guys about the the question of is professional is becoming a professional fisherman easier than ever or harder than ever. Um, I pose that question. And what I want to do is I want to give you guys basically the facts. I'm going to give you guys the facts of how much it costs to go out there and fish a lot of these pro-am events and how much it costs and travel and gas and all that kind of stuff so that way you can use it as a guide for your own preparation and so that way you guys know what you're getting into if in fact you do want to try and fish professionally and you want to go through the Toyota series or the Bassmaster Opens in order to get to the highest level of professional tournament bass fishing. So if you want to know more about that, stay tuned because we're going to talk about it right now. So this, this can't be a video where we're talking about tournament bass fishing and not talk about the fact that it is super expensive to do and you have to get that money from somewhere. Um, there's a lot of people all over the world, all over the nation that really want to be professional fishermen. They want to fish the highest levels that they can. They want to fish, you know, the Bassmaster Elite Series, FLW Tour, um, the Pro Circuit or the, the MLF BPT. Um, but what's weird about fishing is there's no clear cut path to get there, right? There is a clear cut path, but there's multiple paths at the same time. You can fish, like I said, the FLW, Toyota Series events, which is what they're called right now. You can fish the Bassmaster Opens and qualify to fish those trails after that. Um, there's also different federation routes that you can take and stuff like that. But basically what my point is, is in other sports, like we'll take baseball for an example, because I was a baseball player. When you play baseball, you're probably gonna start off in Little League. Maybe you go to Pony League or Juniors, and then you go to high school. Maybe you're playing travel ball at some point, but then you either get drafted out of high school or you go to college and then you get drafted out of college or you go to an independent league and then you get drafted from there or signed from there and then you work your way up through the minor league system in baseball. And then eventually, if you're good enough, you get to the major, the major leagues. Um, with fishing, it's not that clear cut and in my opinion, the barrier to, of entry when it comes to fishing is much higher than it is in other sports. And, and we can go into baseball bats and baseball gloves and cleats and uniforms and all this different stuff and travel baseball and hitting coaches and all of that, but it's not gonna get to the same level of cost that it takes to be a professional fisherman. But even if it did, even if it did, even, even if it did, cost the same amount of money to go through the process of becoming a major league baseball player as it does to become a professional tournament fisherman even if the costs were the same the amount of return on investment that you get from playing baseball is going to way supersede in many cases what you're going to get out of your fishing career just the money and the endorsements that are available to athletes that are playing Major League Baseball or playing in the NFL or playing in the NBA or hockey or even tennis for that matter are a lot greater than a lot of what's out there for fishermen. Um, and then another thing is all these entries that we pay to fish these tournaments, they're not really there in the same way that they are for a typical team sport or a sport like baseball or basketball or football or whatever. So. That's kind of what we're gonna talk about, is, is I'm not gonna parallel it with other sports, I just wanted to kind of give you that guide that with baseball, there is a specific way to get to the major leagues. With fishing, there is a specific way, but it's just much different. There's much more costs involved, and it's just a whole entirely different process that, that I don't think a lot of people realize what that path is, but as a kid, you know exactly what that path is from the time you start playing baseball until you get there or you don't. But with fishermen, I, I get the question, how do you become a professional fisherman? And when you really tell people, it kind of defeats them or it's frustrating to them because they're like, how am I ever gonna afford that? And this video isn't about me trying to talk you out of trying to become a professional fisherman because I'm right there with you. I'm trying to achieve this stuff just like you are. And what I'm trying to do with this is just make this a guide, make this like a way that you can budget 
for your next tournament or for when you decide you want to fish one of these trails or fish one of these series so that way you know what you're looking at, at having to spend in order to get through one of these seasons. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to basically outline and go through basically cost by cost what one tournament is going to cost you and then at the end of it we're going to talk about how you have to multiply that by three for an FLW Toyota Series division or four for a Bassmaster Opens um, division. And that's only for one division. You have three events or four events depending on which trail you decide to fish. And that's only one of the divisions. FLW has a lot of divisions. And then with the Bassmaster Opens, they have two divisions. So but some guys are, are doing this eight times a year. So this number that I'm gonna give you, you can multiply it by eight. And that's what like guys like Scott Martin and Brian Latimer, Brian, um, Bradley Hallman, Andrew Upshaw, a lot of these guys are doing this year is putting a lot of this money towards those Opens to try to make it to the Elite Series. So this guide's gonna give you an idea of what it really costs to go out there and fish some of these events. So the first cost that we're gonna talk about are entry fees. And you can't fish a tournament without paying entry fees. Um, that's just part of getting there. No one has to qualify to fish an FLW Toyota Series. Nobody has to qualify to fish the Bassmaster Opens. Basically, if you pay your money, you're gonna get into that event. Um, there obviously is a cutoff with the number of spots that you can get. Um, there's an, a, a, the amount of fishermen they're gonna let into that tournament it is, 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 is gonna vary. So there might be a tournament sold out that you can't get into. But my point is, is you don't have to qualify to fish these trails. Basically, if you get your entry in on time and you get in under the max capacity of the tournament, you can fish it. You don't have to submit a resume or anything like that. Pay your money and you get to go fish. So the entry fee for one FLW Toyota Series event is 1,700 bucks. And then one entry fee for a Bassmaster Open event is 1,800. And remember, we have to do that three or four times to finish that entire season. So before you even make a cast, before you drive to the event, before you put gas in your boat, before you eat anything on the road, before you pay for any of your hotel, you're basically out $2,000 to start off. But actually the 1,700, but for the 1,800, but for sake of conversation, almost two grand, and you haven't even gotten to the lake yet. So another fee or another cost that you really need to incorporate into your budgeting is gas. Gas is something that you definitely have to take into consideration. It's probably gonna be one of your second most expensive items for your tournament. Um, there's a number of factors that come into play when it comes to how much it's gonna cost you in gas to fish the event. Um, for me in California, gas prices are probably the highest in the country, if not, might be the highest or pretty much up there. Maybe New York or somewhere else has a little bit higher, but we're up there. So my gas costs are gonna be more expensive than, than what a lot of other people are gonna be paying throughout the country. I saw Texas the other day had $2 a gallon gas prices, which would be awesome because I'm paying like $2.90 to $3.20 depending on, on where it's at per gallon for gas. So using that $2 a gallon gas price, which I think is a fair number across the nation to use, and obviously if you know that where you live, gas is more expensive than that, then you're gonna have to adjust the number accordingly. Maybe it's cheaper, you can adjust that number according, accordingly. But for sake of providing the most value to everybody else that's watching this video, we're gonna use $2 a gallon. And we're gonna use my truck and we're gonna use my boat as examples to start factoring in how we're gonna break down those costs and where that that money is going. Um, so basically what you need to remember is when it comes to a tournament of a Bassmaster Open or a Toyota Series, you're gonna have practice time, you're gonna have travel time, and usually you don't travel with a full tank of gas, you're probably not leaving your house with a full tank of gas. If you are, you're towing more weight than you need to. So a lot of times what I try to do is plan it out for my local trips is to basically run my boat almost to empty so that way I'm not towing all that gas around. Obviously if I end up with a half a tank of gas in the boat or something like that before I leave for a tournament, not that big a deal, but a lot of times I'm trying to tow with the least amount of gas as possible. 
Speaking of my boat and using it as an example, my boat's a 2019 Skeeter ZX225, has a 225 horse engine on it, and the gas tank in that boat is 44 gallons. It's a pretty good sized gas tank. There's boats with bigger gas tanks, there's boats with smaller gas tanks. So if you have that $44 or 44 gallon gas tank at $2 a gallon, it's gonna cost you $88 to fill that tank. So when you get to the lake and you're gonna start your practice time, you're gonna wanna fill that, that boat up. So that way you have gas to get you through that day at least, maybe the next day, depending on how much you drive around. But you can easily use up to a half to three quarters a tank a day during practice. Some guys are gonna use a full tank, some might use a little bit less, but for sake of conversation, sake of an example, we'll go with a half to three quarters of a tank being used in your day of practice. You're generally gonna have three days of practice for these events, sometimes more, maybe less, depending on maybe you couldn't get off work or something like that, or life got in the way and you couldn't practice for the three days. But a lot of guys are practicing for more than that. A lot of guys are going five, six, seven days ahead of time to really try to figure out what's going on at that lake. But I'm gonna go with three days for our calculations here. Obviously, if you get there earlier, it's gonna cost you more money because you're gonna be going through more gas. So with that 44 gallon gas tank, using a half a tank would be 22 gallons, which gets you to the $44 a day. If you're using that three quarter tank, which is gonna be 33 gallons, now you're talking about $66 a day in gas. So let's do that math. Now you have three days of practice, two to three days of a tournament where you're burning that much gas pretty much every single day. So for the full practice and the full event, your gas costs are gonna cost you around 264 to $396. That's a fairly big margin, but you can basically just put it around, let's just say 325 bucks or something like that. But basically your gauge is basically from 264 to almost $400. Now that's just the boat. The other gas factor is your towing vehicle. I drive a truck. My truck has 36, it has a 36 gallon gas tank. Most of my travel takes me about 10 hours in order for me to get from where I live to the lake that I'm fishing. Um, some, some a little bit longer, some a little bit less, but like I said, we're trying to make this as, as general and as applicable to everybody as possible. So we're gonna use that 10 hour um, travel time. Now, I just fished the Delta FLW series event and the Delta is about 475 miles away from me. So when I'm towing from where I live to the Delta, it's gonna take me about two tanks of gas. So using that $2 gallon number at 36 gallons at two of them, two tanks of gas to get there. So that's 36 and 36. So that's 72 times two, $144. So to get to the tournament and to get home is $288. So, one other thing you need to make sure of is most of the time the lakes that you're fishing are gonna be pretty big. Maybe you're launching from different launch ramps. You're gonna to have to drive to get gas because gas on land is gonna be cheaper than the gas on the boat dock if you get a slip or something like that. So you're gonna be driving that boat and that truck out to dinner, to the grocery store, wherever, to different ramps. So you're gonna be burning gas while you're driving around in and around the event that you're preparing for or you're fishing in. So I would estimate that you're gonna burn at least a half a tank of gas in just driving in and around the lake and the city where you're actually fishing that tournament out of. So now you're at another $26 in fuel. So now your total for driving to the lake, home, in and around the, the city that you're in is $314 for just the truck. So basically, you have up to $400 in gas for practice and $300 for the travel to the lake, home, in and around the city. So you're at like 700 bucks in just gas prices, or just gas costs. So obviously, if you're driving 10 hours, you're not making that drive every day. You're gonna have to get a hotel. Maybe you're camping. Maybe you got an Airbnb with a whole bunch of other guys. Maybe you're staying at a hotel with a couple other guys. But basically my point is, is that's another cost that you need to factor in. That's another cost that you're gonna have to figure out how to pay for. So, obviously depending on where you stay is gonna depend on how much it costs. If you're staying in a pretty affluent part 
of the country, it's probably gonna cost you a little bit more money. If you're staying in the middle of nowhere, maybe it's not gonna cost you as much. Obviously, if you're staying with a bunch of people, the costs are gonna go down because you can split it up amongst a bunch of people. Um, camping can be cheap, but then who has the trailer? Do you have the trailer? Or did you buy one in order to fish this stuff? All kinds of different factors. But to keep it simple, I'm gonna use 50 bucks a day for the hotel and lodging costs. That $50 number assumes probably that you're staying with somebody in that room, or maybe there's a couple of you, or basically kind of a camping would be a, probably a little bit cheaper, maybe 30 bucks, 20 bucks a night if you're camping or something like that. Maybe a little bit more depending on where you're staying at. But I think that $50 a night is, is a fair number. It could be more, easily could be more. Um, I've been to tournaments where I had to stay by myself and I'm paying, you know, $150 a night. So that this number could go up pretty significant, significantly pretty easily. But for sake of conversation, for sake of this video, and to make it as applicable to everybody as possible, I'm going to use that $50 a night number. So typically, using me as an example, I stay the night before a tournament, or stay the night before the practice starts, and then you're going to have your three nights of practice. So you're going to have the night that you get there, your travel day, one, two, three nights which then goes into your tournament day and then I'm gonna stay at least two of the three tournament nights so basically you have all your practice and then you have day one of the tournament you're gonna have day two of the tournament and then day three you're either driving home or you made the cut and you're driving home after now if you maybe if you win the tournament or something like that and you feel like you're just gonna suck it up and you're gonna pay the money and you're gonna then go home the following day that is an option. Obviously, it's gonna increase your costs, but normally what I do is I'm gonna drive home on that final day of the tournament. Sometimes if it's a long drive, I will stay regardless, and um, I'm not gonna risk crashing or falling asleep while I'm driving. It's not worth that. The 50 bucks a night's not worth crashing or falling asleep while you're driving, obviously. But typically, you know, I'm gonna be driving home after that third day of the tournament. Um, or if I don't make the cut, I'm driving home when everybody else in the cut is fishing. So using that $50 number, you have the night before, the three days of practice, and then at least two tournament days. So we're looking at six days, or six nights total for that event. So 50 bucks a night, six days, we're at $300. Remember though, a lot of guys are practicing more than those three days. So if you go and you're gonna practice longer, it's gonna increase your cost. If you're gonna stay an extra night, maybe you stay an extra ni a night or two or something for some reason, obviously these numbers could go up and they could be higher, but I think 300 bucks is, is a fairly decent number for your lodging costs for a tournament. So something else that we haven't touched on yet is food. We all gotta eat, we all get hungry, some of us want a big breakfast, some of us don't want a breakfast at all, some of us want to eat lunch on the boat, some of us don't want to eat lunch on the boat, some of us want a big dinner, some of us don't, some of us want the steakhouse, some of us want the buffet, some of us want fast food. Everybody is different when it comes to the food part. So, what I'm gonna try to do to make this as useful to everybody is I'm just gonna say 40 bucks a day in food. That might be a conservative number, it might be more pretty easily, because if you're gonna go to the gas station and you're gonna buy an energy drink like I do, or you're gonna buy you know, a sandwich there or something, you could easily spend 20 bucks at the gas station getting some water, stuff like that. But some guys don't do that. Others bring stuff. Um, so basically that $40 a day number, I think is a fairly decent number to use. So again, you're gonna have 40 bucks a day. You're gonna have seven to eight days that you're gonna have to buy food for because you have the travel day, to get to the lake, you have your three tournament days, your three um, practice days, and then a travel day home. So that's where you can get to that seven or eight days worth of food that you have to account for. So seven to eight days of food times 40 bucks a day, you're looking at 20 or $280 to $320, depending on how many days you're trying to cover. But basically my point is, is you gotta factor in what you're gonna eat. You can look into ways to do it cheaper. I've heard stories of like Mike Iaconelli going and getting cheap hamburgers from McDonald's and stashing them for, for days to make it through the tournament because it was the cheapest way that he could eat and still go fish. I don't do that, but 
obviously it worked for him. Um, I try to do a mixture of all of it. Um, I've, I try to bring food to eat on the boat. I try to bring my breakfast so that way I don't have to buy stuff at the gas station every single day. Try to bring energy drinks for myself so I can buy them in bulk at like Costco or something like that. And that way I'm paying a little bit less money than I would at the gas station. Um, I try to bring, you know, a bunch of gallon jugs of water because for me it's a lot of times it's easier to just get those gallon jugs. If I can't find the gallon jugs at the time, I'll just get a bunch of like regular water bottle size, just like the one I'm drinking while I'm recording this. But basically my point is, is there's ways to do it a little bit cheaper, but I think that $40 number, $40 a day number is a fair one, but it could easily get higher. Um, but do some research and look into it and figure out what kind of foods you like to eat on the water, how you can bring a lot of that stuff with you to offset some of the costs. Maybe you just need to go to the grocery store when you get there or something like that. But those are all different ways to cut down some of those prices. But if you're going to a restaurant or a nice restaurant getting a steak dinner every night, that, that number is gonna go up pretty easily. Um, but if that's what you're into and that's what you need to do to be successful, then I say do it. You gotta, you're putting all this money out there. You need to feel your body appropriately. You, not, you need to eat as healthy as you can. Sometimes that's not as easy on the boat as, as, as it, you know, at home or something like that. But you need to account for the food and you need to do what you can in order to fuel yourself appropriately so you can be as successful, as successful as possible in that tournament. So we've been talking about all this different stuff so far. And if you haven't noticed, I haven't talked about anything that is involved with the actual catching of a bass. I'm not talking about rods. I'm not talking about reels. I'm not talking about soft plastics. I'm not talking about crankbaits. I'm not talking about fishing line, coaling equipment or anything like that. I haven't talked about any of that stuff because all this other stuff is a requirement just like the tackle, just like the boat is, just like the towing vehicle is. So I, I, strate I, I did that on purpose is because the tackle part is kind of like a given but it is something that you need to factor in when you're preparing for these events because inevitably, no matter how much tackle you have, you're gonna need something for whatever lake you're going to. Maybe you gotta strip off line because your line's old or it's too heavy or it's too light. Maybe you need to go from fluorocarbon on a reel to braid on a reel or something like that. There's always something that you're gonna need for each individual tournament. Now, if you're a tackle hoarder kind of a person, maybe you're not gonna have to buy as much. If you buy big, giant bulk spools of line, maybe you're not gonna have to buy the little spools every tournament. You have all that line at home, but that's just gonna be a big cost at one time. But basically, what I have found is I'm going to be re-spooling at least five to six rods, either at some point during practice or before the tournament begins. And using you know your typical 300 yard spool of fluorocarbon those are about 25 bucks a piece some could be a little bit cheaper and some could be a little bit more but that 25 dollar number is right smack in the middle for most of your um, different brands of line i like to use a backing on my on my reel so that way i have like some mono or some or some braid that's not going to really go bad down there on the bottom of my reel so that way when i go to re-spool that fluorocarbon about 150 yards of that of that 300 yard brand new spool goes on to the reel so that way when I buy that $25 spool I'm going to get two two full reels out of it if that makes sense so basically you're you're getting that $25 spool and putting you know half of it on one reel and half of it on the other reel and you use that backing so that way you you have you're not taking so that way you're not putting an entire spool of fluorocarbon and wasting a lot of it because a lot of us don't fish all that line all the way down to the bottom of that reel because it gets all crimped up and it's all small and everything like that so using a backing is a good way to save money online um, but like I said you're gonna be going and re-spooling you know anywhere from five to six rods probably maybe more maybe less if you're lucky and you get super dialed and all you need is like two three rods something like that but basically at 25 bucks a pop, you know, at five to six reels, and assuming that you do the backing like I do, you know, 25, 75 to 100 bucks in just line. And we haven't even talked about any soft plastics that you might wanna get, some hard baits that you wanna get. And that stuff's really hard to gauge because some guys are tackle hoarders and they got plastics for days, or they got hard baits for days, or they got spinner baits for days or whatever. But I'd say $100 a 
is another expense on top of that line that you're probably going to spend because maybe you ran out of, you know, heavy tungsten weights that you need to go punch through that thick grass up at the delta. Or you ran out of your favorite color worm or you ran out of, you know, double tail grubs or you need to buy chatterbait trailers or something like that and you just you got to buy them you got to have them for the tournament because you know you're going to be throwing it. it's maybe it's your favorite lure and you just go through them all the time at home and you need those for that tournament you're going to end up having to buy some tackle um, so i think you know in total that 200 dollar number is probably a fair number for most tournaments you know you're looking at maybe 100 bucks in line 100 bucks in tackle and obviously there's some give and take there maybe you don't need as much line for one tournament so you know maybe only about 50 bucks in line but basically my point is is you're gonna have to buy tackle, you're gonna have to buy line, you're gonna have to buy some lures, some terminal stuff. So factor that into your budget. And for this video and this conversation, we're gonna go with 200 bucks in that tackle cost. So a couple things that I'm leaving out on purpose are your boat payment and your truck payment. Not all of us have brand new boats or brand new trucks. So I didn't wanna include that. And those costs are gonna be there whether you're fishing a tournament or you're just fishing a local lake anywhere. So I didn't want to factor that in, but those are costs that if you feel like you need to have that top of the line boat in order to fish that event, you're gonna probably have a boat payment unless you have a lot of money and you're gonna go buy a boat cash. But then you probably aren't watching this video to figure out how much it costs to fish a tournament because if you got 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 grand in, to go pay cash for a boat, you're probably not worried about the you know, price that it costs you to fish one or four events. But for those of us where that is a factor and you're financing your boat, that is something that you need to consider and you're gonna have 12 of those a year that you're gonna have to make. Those, those 12 month payments um, for your truck or for your boat or both um, are things that you do need to consider when you're budgeting for the year. But I didn't wanna put it into this, turn or this tournament cost specific video because I feel like those are outside of the tournament. It is a necessary cost for a lot of us but you know, I didn't want to put it in to the, to the cost for this specific video. But if you want that information, I would just ballpark it at 350 bucks for your truck, 350, boat, 350 bucks for your boat. Obviously, if you buy a really expensive truck, a really expensive boat, that payment's probably gonna be higher. Okay, so I've broken down a ton of the different costs that go in to these events. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of briefly go over them one more time so the average entry fee is $1,750. The average boat gas is $330. The average truck gas, $314. Lodging, $300. Food, $300. Tackle, $200. So your total cost for that event is $3,194 for one single event. Now remember, we're gonna be fishing the entire season because we wanna fish professionally and we wanna to get to the Elite Series. We wanna to get to the FLW Pro Circuit. So you're gonna to have to do that three or four times. So for an FLW Series season in one division, you're looking at $9,582 based on the numbers that I gave you guys. If you're gonna fish the Bass Opens in one division, that's four events, so you're looking at $12,776. Now, obviously, if you're getting to the point where you're gonna make the Elite Series, you're gonna make the Pro Circuit, you probably cash some checks along the way in these events that are gonna offset your costs. Maybe you did good enough that it paid for your whole year, and if you did, that's awesome. But for a lot of us, you're gonna have this period of time where you're paying your dues, where you're you're, you're learning, you're learning how to practice, you're learning how to tournament fish, you're learning the different lakes in your region, and you're competing against the guys that are the best at those lakes, so you're gonna have some growing pains, you're gonna pay your dues, you're gonna have bad tournaments. You might have good ones at the same time, but in the beginning, most likely, you're probably gonna have some crap tournaments where you don't cash checks. Maybe there's seasons that go on and you don't cash a single check, and that's what a lot of this is for. A lot of this video is for those guys that know that there's a, a plan, there's gonna be a progression in their career or in their journey to get to that highest level. And, and that's just the reality because if you've never fished a pro-am tournament and you go to fish that pro-am, you're fishing against guys that have that experience, that, that fish that lake every day or have fished that lake for the last 30 years. 
So you're competing against people that have way more experience than you do on that lake. Uh, so those are things that you're gonna have to, to battle against. It's an uphill battle, it's a hard one, but that's not, it's obviously not something that you can't overcome. Guys overcome it every single year. That doesn't mean that you can't, but it is something that I want you guys to have in the back of your mind is, is this may not be a one season deal. This might be, you know, a five, six, seven year, 10 year um, progression. I think I watched a Brian Latimer video at one point and he's talking about um, something similar to this. It's a little bit different video, but basically he's talking about people's journey to get to the to the professional ranks and, and looking at it as a 10 year commitment to get there. And as I'm going through there, I could easily see how it could take 10 years to get there. Um, so I just say that so that way you guys can start to prepare for the long term, prepare for it to take longer than a season or two, prepare for it to, to be a commitment that you're gonna have to make in order to figure out how you're gonna pay for this, how you're gonna be able to be consistent, and how you're gonna be able to also live you know, when you're not fishing those tournaments. And this, I really wanna stress that I'm not trying to talk anybody out of this. I wanna give you the facts, I wanna give you the information so that way you can make whatever decisions you need to make in order to be as successful as possible because we don't wanna go out to these tournaments and feel like we are, you know, not going to make our house payment or we're not going to be able to pay make our boat payment or or we're going to lose our family because we're going to get divorced or whatever because we're we're fishing these events i want you guys to be able to prepare save money um, figure out how to get sponsored or or something to figure out how to get there maybe you're lucky and someone's going to pay your way and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff but a lot of people don't have that situation and what i want is for people to be able to sit down budget everything and figure out what they need to do in order to have the money in order to chase their dream. So basically in closing, we kind of, we went through this whole thing. We talked about what it takes to fish one event. We talked about what it takes to fish the entire series of everything. And the other part that I want to bring up, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, is if you do qualify to make that professional tournament trail is it's a blessing and a curse all at the same time. And I, and I use the term curse loosely because that's what we're all trying to achieve. The only reason it, it, it could be perceived as not a blessing is because once you get to that point, those entry fees aren't $1,700 or $1,800 anymore. They're $5,000-ish per tournament. So I think the FLW Pro Circuit is having six or seven events next year. I think the Bassmaster Elites do seven or eight events per year. So, you know, 5,000 times eight is 40 grand, 5,000 times seven is 35 grand. So you're talking about some serious entry fees, some serious costs that are involved. And um, getting sponsors isn't as easy as everybody thinks. There's a lot of guys out on tour that aren't, aren't getting the amount of money that I think a lot of people think they're getting. And, um, you know, getting a check at those, some of those elite level events, you know, a bottom check's $10,000, which to you and I sounds like a good amount of money. But when you have that $5,000 entry fee, plus the cost, like we just talked about, you might've made $3,000 from that tournament and you only get seven, six, seven, eight chances at it a year. So let's say you made $3,000 for a week of fishing, which, okay, I worked a week, made three grand, that's not bad. But if you can only do it seven or eight times a year, times three grand, that's 21 to $24,000, 32,000 at the absolute, you know, most if you're, if you made four grand and you were able to figure out how to do it on the cheap and you made four grand from that tournament and you did it eight times in a row, which most people don't cash a check every single tournament, even at the highest levels. So you have to figure out how to make a living on that amount of money, or you have to figure out another way to get income in order to survive on that level. And um, I think that's where the, obviously the sponsorship stuff comes in. Um, but I think that as fishermen, we need to look at ourselves as entrepreneurs. We need to look at ourselves as business people and our own fishing itself needs to be the business and we need to figure out ways to make money doing that in addition to the tournament winnings, in addition to the sponsorship stuff. And I think there's ways to do that and I'm trying to figure out how I can find my way into that that niche, that niche in order to you know, make some money 
doing the stuff that I love to do because that's I think a lot of our goals is we want to fish because we love it and we want to make a living doing it because we love it but that means you're getting money from it somehow to pay the bills to pay that boat payment to pay that truck payment to pay that mortgage or whatever so we got to figure that out and I'm in that with you and I'm obviously trying to share my journey with you guys and as I learn stuff you know I plan on sharing it with you guys and uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was valuable to you I hope it kind of opened your eyes on what you're getting into when you're trying to fish these events and what these costs are and um, if you're new to the channel please give this video a thumbs up or not if you're new but if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this obviously we fish a lot we make tackle as well and um, if you like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you want to debate me on any of these numbers or think I'm crazy for for what I said this stuff cost comment down below let's get a conversation going but um, I hope you enjoyed the content I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time see ya